Obviously, people remember the Aleppo moment. Sure. How do you feel about it? Well, that was it was going yeah. to happen. I would uh, hypothesize that it happened to Trump about 150 mm -hmm. times. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, it happens to me. Well, what do you do when something like that happens? Well, they each had a billion eight. So when it came to golfs, um, they had the firepower to come back. Now, for wait, by the way, can I just ask? You mean gaffs, right? Not coughs. Well, thank you. Hi, this is Nick Gillespie with Reason, and today we are talking with two-term governor of New Mexico and two-time Libertarian Party presidential candidate, Gary Johnson. Governor Johnson, thanks for talking. Nick, appreciate you doing this. So you are in D.C., uh, and we're talking before you go talk at CPAC, the annual conven uh, convention of conservative action people in D.C. Why are you speaking at CPAC? Well, I think uh, it's an opportunity to give a libertarian perspective on things. Now, I'm going to be on a panel when it comes to uh, economics and uh, tax policy. So that is a that is a Trump plus the reduction of taxes. Okay. Well, I was going to say I was going to ask what do you, what do you think about Trump so far? I mean, you ran against Trump, uh, and you did historically well for a Libertarian Party candidate, uh, you know, against Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. What do you, you know, Trump's been in office over a year. What is your evaluation? Well, uh, he has not told the truth. Um, building a wall across the border is crazy. Now, he did say he was going to build a wall across the border, but uh, said he wasn't going to involve himself in uh, states' rights, right. or he was going to stand up for states' rights. And here we have Jeff Sessions that has come out very vocally against marijuana. Ultimately, they, that may uh, lead to legislation that will uh, not make marijuana a class one narcotic, which is really so. A good those thing. are two things that where Trump's bluster or his bark is worse. He's got a lot of bark but no bite because we haven't actually started building the border wall. And Sessions is saying, "I'm going to, you know, let's uh, let's start looking at these states that have legalized marijuana, but nothing has happened yet. Nothing has happened, and it, like I say, it may lead to legislation on on the Dreamers. Right. Um, you know, hey, here it is. We may have legislation that clears all this up, but uh, his his rhetoric Are is you horrible. Looking for a position in his cabinet, which seems to be no. emptying out. But no, no, I mean, so these are so you're. Set, I mean, in a weird way, Trump is actually." delivering the opposite of what he promised. There's no wall. We may get the dream dreamers may be legalized and uh, pot may be descheduled or rescheduled. But that isn't something yeah. that he is advocating. Right. But as a as a uh, consequence of what he's doing, that may actually happen. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, on economics or on tax policy, uh, he obviously he and the Republicans put through a major tax plan. Um, do you like that tax plan, um, and how, do, how does it stack up to what you were arguing for on the on the campaign? Well, trail? that uh, that uh, corporate tax rates lower to twenty percent—that's a positive. I was advocating zero corporate mm -hmm. tax, which I think would be amazing, and uh, that uh, individuals that we would do away with income tax, that we would abolish uh, the IRS. Uh, I just think that that would have an enormous positive impact on all of our lives, uh, including being being able to fund government. And that would have been replaced by uh, essentially a national sales tax. Well, in in what I advocated was was that we switch then to a consumption tax, and I held up the fair tax as a model for how you would would or could accomplish that. And certainly, Trump's t or the Republican tax reform. Whatever else you can say about it, it it really does build in bigger and bigger deficits, and it doesn't simplify things. Very yeah, much. and that's yeah. the that's the half. Uh, what about spending? I mean, that's the if if you want to hold an optimism for Trump and the future, is that he would actually at some point address spending, but he hasn't. Uh, spending has, as you know, uh, increased. So. What difference does it make uh, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican? Uh, and that's the that's where I come in. Is what about, how about a libertarian? Uh, what about uh, regulation? Uh, do you think Trump has been good? I mean, uh, oh, and, you know, and particularly as absolutely. a Western state governor, he's he's kind of pulled back the EPA a little bit. Um, is that a, I mean, talk in in relation to 
both what Trump has done, but also your experience as a Western state governor with what uh, New Mexico has like basically more federal lands than as a percentage of its mass than almost any other state, right? right. Well, the Western states uh, yeah. have that phenomenon. Yeah. And west of the... So, so here yeah. it is, Washington, D.C., east of the Mississippi, there is absolutely no comprehension whatsoever of what public mm -hmm. lands actually are. Well, west of the Mississippi, Mississippi mm -hmm. you've got all these public lands, and uh, they pass laws regarding public lands, like access to public lands, which you and I, we look at that and we think, well, yeah, you should have access to public lands. Well, it's not even possible to have access to, because they're laid out in checkerboard fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, leaving those decisions to the states, the, the deregulation, if you will, getting the federal government off the backs of states that are well-meaning, yeah, you bet. Mm -hmm. That's a so good thing. That's a good thing. And uh, what about at the FDA? Uh, Trump, uh, you know, I mean, his, uh, his appointee seems to have pulled back from some of the overregulation of medical devices and of pharmaceuticals. Um, all, po all positive. Yeah. Uh, companies are not going to be able to sell products that are dangerous to the public because there are attorneys out there. And I think attorneys do a much better job of policing than the federal government does. But then you you also mentioned um, but, that- But here it is. Yeah. Trump, Trump has this press conference where I am going to challenge the pharmaceutical industry to come up with a non-addictive substitute for uh, opioids. Hmm. Hello, what about cannabis, marijuana? Come on. So there's a, there's a, there's a deafness that exists, but, and, all of this deregulation that is, in fact, happening, and I, and I only guess at this because I don't know the specifics, but I wish that he would articulate what he's doing and why. That, I think, is a very important part of governing. Yeah, talk about, uh, you mentioned his rhetoric as being, uh, you know, awful and divisive. Um, how does his failure to kind of articulate either larger principles when it comes to deregulation or... You know, on that level, he seems to be mostly silent. He deregulates up, but doesn't explain why it's good. But then when it comes to things like immigration, he's over the top in, you know, people coming from shithole countries, blah, blah, blah. Um, what, how, how does his rhetoric um, influence your views of him? Well, that uh, they influence my views on him in a, ne in a very negative way. Gosh, the getting elected president of the United States, come on, we, we all recognize that he has an agenda and saw that up front. Well, mm -hmm. how about telling us why there are benefits to this? Now, when it comes to immigration, when it comes to marriage equality, uh, woman's right to choose, I, you know what, I, I just, I, I don't buy into his arguments at all, but at least he perhaps tries uh, and argue, arguing those points. The deregulation part, the getting into the weeds uh, policy-wise, you know, that was, uh, I kind of found that interesting as governor of New Mexico. And yes, I think I did a, an incredible, I, th I think I turned the whole system on its head, but I was upfront about everything it was that I was doing. So my legacy is, well, gee, uh, I didn't necessarily agree with anything Gary Johnson did, but you know what? He... He had reasons for it, and we understood what those reasons were. Do you think Trump overall would, is better than Hillary Clinton would have been as president? I think we would have kind of a myriad of other issues with Hillary that would probably be equally as, uh, um, equally as bad, and that was something that I said during the election. So one or the other, and it would have been, would have been horrible. I think it would be horrible horrible if Hillary would have been president, but I think Trump's got his horrible also. Uh, as somebody who was involved in the 2016 presidential campaign, do you have any take on whether or not Russian agents of influence were screwing around with you or with the, you know, with vote totals? That seems to be a lingering uh, well, shadow. Of well, uh, okay. It's, it's okay for the, it's not okay for the Russians to do it, but it's okay for Hillary Clinton to do it. There was an article that appeared. Well, in but I, I agree well, let me with speak, that. Let yeah. me speak, okay. let me speak yeah. to you about what happened to me. And okay. Not that you're not aware. About six weeks uh, to go in the campaign, uh, the New York Times comes out with an article that says, watch out, Hillary. Uh, Johnson is garnering more millennial support than you are. Uh, that was on a Friday. On a Saturday, 
200, I'll, I'll say 200 internet trolls descended on my space. Mm. And now you had 20 news organizations, call it fake news if you want, but you had 20 pop-ups that appeared. Here's what Gary Johnson has said. Mm -hmm. And if you read any of them, you probably read a few, your takeaway was that this is the dumbest guy that's ever walked the planet. And at that point, I stopped Googling myself. And to this day, I don't Google myself. I don't look at what so people are saying about me. Do you assume that was Russian bots or was that there Hillary were Clinton articles people? Written, or? There were articles written that Hillary Clinton spent $50 million to discredit me. Hmm. Now, was it $50 million? Well, we spent $12 million on our campaign. That's what we raised. So did it affect um, the election? Did it affect me? Uh, well, like I say, Google me today and your takeaway is going to be, <laughs> it's good we didn't have that guy. So it's, I mean, what you're saying is that, or if I may, are you saying that the question of Russian influence is less important than the ways in which people were, everybody was trying Every, to, to- Everybody kind of was trigger. trying to man manipulate this. And when it comes to the internet, I mm -hmm. mean, you pay for, you pay for those, where does, where does your website pop up? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're talking about $50 million, um, gee, the first 20 things you're gonna read are gonna be potentially subsidized by that $20 million. When it comes to the Russian influence, uh, uh, I just read where they, among other things, just promoted Bernie Sanders. Well, that would have been a uh, that was a negative. That was a negative for Hillary Clinton. But she also was bringing her own kind of baggage to the party, right? Sure, Never. sure. But well, let me ask you if you know if it was a question of Hillary Clinton being able to say, okay, flying monkeys, go destroy Gary Johnson. Here's fifty million dollars. Here's twenty million dollars. Um, would that mean that you would want to limit the ways in which people can spend their campaign money? No, but it's it is uh, so back to policy, mm -hmm. back to getting elected, being in office. Um, what what potentially could be done to fix that, Nick? I can't tell you what potentially mm -hmm. could be done to fix that, but. There are ideas out there, and certainly the best ideas launched would be, in this case, Facebook themselves, Twitter themselves uh, dealing with this. But um, looking at government and even as a libertarian, look, a, a takeaway from reading Hayek is, is if you're an elected official, if you're in the public policy arena, you should always be looking to improve things, mm. always improve things. So that having been governor of New Mexico, that was always my tact. What, uh, to t uh, stay on the uh, 2016 campaign a bit, uh, obviously people remember the Aleppo moment. Sure. Have you, you know, how, how do you feel about that now? It's, you know, it's been a while and it's in the rearview mirror. Um, you know, were there moments, was that a turning point, do you think, in your campaign? Um, how, how do you, yes or no, how do you feel about it? Well, that was, it was going yeah. to happen. It, it, you know, it, I, I would uh, hypothesize that it happened to Trump about 150 mm -hmm. times. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, it happens to me. Well, what do you do when something like that happens? Well, we had tw they each had a billion eight. So when it came to Goffs, um, they had the firepower to come back. Now, for Wait, by the way, can I just ask, you mean gaffs, right? Not Goffs. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you. this is a gaff, uh, right? Uh, the, uh, yeah, this is a real time yeah, deconstruction. Right. Okay, right. so, but right. yeah, I mean, it's. it's so, 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 golf, I yeah. said golf. Yeah. Well, see, there now that, go. there, yeah. there we go. You know, that, that could be, a, that could be a, a testament to my intellect right there. Yeah. But uh, it's basically they were able to bounce back. And it is what. Do well, you, so, so for us, immediately, yeah. within days of that, I did a major, poli a major foreign policy speech right. uh, in Chicago. And guess what? Nobody carried it. Well, you know, our firepower was very limited. Yeah. But, but we did all the right things. And it was going to happen. Gaffes happen. Yeah. Um, we are... Uh, I always thought that honesty would rule the day. I always thought that integrity would rule the day. I always thought that telling the truth would rule the day. Do you, and it doesn't. Do you hate America now? 
I don't hate America. I hate, Do you hate politics. Americans? I hate I hate <laughs> I hate politics. I, yeah. I think political office today is toxic. So are you uh, you know, here you are, it's two you know, uh, whatever it is, February, late February, early March of two thousand eighteen, you're speaking at CPAC. Um, are you thinking about running again no, in the future? No, Absolutely not. not. No, okay. I'm done. I'm yeah. done with uh, elected political office. Right. Uh, but my political um, arm, Our America, we're going to dedicate ourselves to, well, how do you change this? And don't you have to vote for a... Don't you have to vote for another party to change this? And so libertarians, I think, really uh, have an opportunity here. And the opportunity rests solely in having really good candidates and having some really good candidates win. Yeah. And the Our America Initiative is your nonprofit that looks at a, a variety of policy issues. Um, and is it affiliated with the Libertarian Party or are you still, are you, I mean, you were a two term governor as a Republican. You renounced your Republicanness uh, or your membership. Um, are you still fully enmeshed in the Libertarian Party or how, how do you think well, about by, party politics? Well, by enmeshed, I do think that the Libertarian Party um, um, emulates the feelings of most Americans. And I summarize that during the 2016 election by saying most Americans, I think, are fiscally conservative and socially, they don't care, they, you know, socially liberal. You should be able to make decisions in your own life as long as those decisions don't adversely affect others. I think most people feel that way. The Republican Party doesn't emulate that and the Democrat Party certainly doesn't emulate that either when it comes to dollars and cents. When um, Neither of them do when it comes to dollars and cents yeah. right now. Right, and foreign policy too. They seem to be pretty similar, right? It's all lockstep and, uh, you know, the f Constitution, the, the founding fathers, they never visualized or never believed that there would be uh, political parties. And if there were going to be political parties, that might be the demise mm. of our republic. In terms of foreign policy in the in the presidential um, kind of mess, mess of issues or massive issues, obviously terrorism like bothers people in a way. But did you find that people... You know, it, were they responsive to your vision of a of a non interventionist foreign policy, or of having a defense department no, as opposed to a no, war department? No, no, they weren't. I think I think everybody, and that's the that's the fear that politics really are people running for office. That uh, look, drugs are the scourge of the earth. Terrorism is the scourge of the earth. Uh, Afghanistan is the scourge of the earth. Iran is the scourge of the earth. Elect me and I will protect you from all of these uh, threats and evils. And that's what politics is. And I've never been a part of that. Well, one of the things you used to say a lot during the campaign was Google Gary Johnson. You're no longer doing that, you said. But you also used to say Uber everything. Uber like, let's everything. Turn it, get Uber for everything. Do you still believe in that? And yes. do you think, will that carry, the, will that carry American America forward in progress. I I absolutely believe that 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 whatever it is that you do in your life, if you can directly deal with the end user and get paid such, um, that's a good thing. And I look at Uber as a model for that. You've got drivers that are own their own cars, and I realize that's in not all the cases, right. and maybe it is, but. You know, you own your own cars, you're your own boss, you can do what you want, you give a piece to Uber because they've arranged to 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 do all this. Well, that could be a model for plumbers, that could be a model for lawyers, that could be a uh, a model for electric you you name it. Uh, that's I do ultimately think that that's the way things are going to evolve. Eliminate the middleman. Let me get paid the seventy-five dollars an hour instead of getting paid twenty-five dollars an hour. And now we raise all sorts of liability issues. But insurance can change that a person becomes uh, insured from a liability standpoint to be able to do anything. If you did away with income tax, holy cow, you could go help your neighbor and get paid. To, to help your neighbor, you know, your neighbor needs help moving some boxes. Hey, I'll pay you 20 bucks to do that. Well, today, if you take that 20 bucks, uh, you're, you're technically you're in violation of the law because you're not going to claim that as income. 
One of the issues that is, uh, per was particularly front and center to you was drug legalization, particularly uh, pot legal or the end of uh, pot prohibition, marijuana prohibition. You're involved with some marijuana companies. What's going on in that area of your life, your business life? Well, currently I'm involved uh, with CB1, which uh, you know they, they do have a website, but it's a hedge mm -hmm. fund uh, by uh, that uh, buying uh, stock of publicly traded companies in the marijuana space. Very exciting. And I do believe that it could be one of the biggest investment opportunities in the next uh, decade mm -hmm. because 65% of Americans now support legalizing marijuana. Maybe it's not 65, but it's the highest that it's mm -hmm. ever been before. It's, it's going to happen and it's a, it's a positive. I mean, and I say a positive because the alternatives from a medical standpoint, the uh, opioids, opioids, uh, replacement for opioids, and on the alcohol front, uh, I haven't had a drink of alcohol in 30 years. I do use marijuana uh, occasionally, and uh, but use, it's it's hear? much much safer. You would drink and you would get drunk, right? I would drink, and why have one beer when you could have three sure. and, and catch a buzz? Yeah, and, and then three beers the next morning really had an effect. For me, anyway. Yeah. For me, for some, I have no problem with anybody drinking as long as they're not doing harm right. to others. But then, so with pot, what you know, what does pot do for you that's better than drinking? And and I, you know, I understand there's the the large arguments which I mostly agree with uh, to the extent that I'm aware of them that. Pot is less dangerous. It, it screws up your mind less. It doesn't hurt your me, liver. You know, you don't have to smoke it anymore. But well, do you get high when you take uh, when you use pot? Well, uh, I do, and uh, I, I've, I've always said that it kind of uh, it's it's a mind rolf. Um, okay, you know, rolfing. This rolfing. is now we're yeah. going back yeah, to like yeah, a seventies. Yeah. Well, mas weird massage, massage rolfing. Yeah, 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 yeah. kind of a brain rolf, oh, if you wow. will. Rearrange yeah. the bookshelves in a good way, not a bad yeah. way. So. That's my experience. Yeah. And for anybody that has problems with substances, and really there's a very small amount of people that do have mm -hmm. problems with marijuana, um, you know, that's, that's uh, going to always exist. What was, uh, you know, it, and you see uh, pot or marijuana derived products as one, one possible way of lessening the reliance on opioids, whether we're talking about heroin or, or uh, we're talking about prescription drugs that get Absolutely. misused. Yeah. Um, what, if, when you were governor of New Mexico, what were the drugs that you were most often dealing with? That, that were causing real social harms, not simply because of their, you know, well, their that, status uh, as black market. Well, there's, there's, the, there's the perception and there's the reality. And the perception was, was that when I was governor of New Mexico, that drugs were the scourge of the earth. Well, the rea and including marijuana. Well, the reality, and I'm governor of New Mexico, reality. Half of what we spend on law enforcement, half of what we spend in the courts, and half of what we spend in the prisons is drug related. Do you know that in 2017, the number one arrest offense in the United States was still, is still marijuana? Hmm. And I'll bet that's the case in 2018. So with all this talk about legalization, that is still the fact. And it's wrong. It's wrong to criminalize an activity that like I say, you're not doing any harm to anyone arguably other than yourself. Should that be an arrestable offense? I don't believe so. Well, what, how, could you sketch out the, uh, the scenario as you see it where pot is now kind of, I mean, it is legal at the state level in a handful of states and uh, Massachusetts is actually going to join the, the pot club the marijuana club later this year with recreational legalization. It's, you know, in dozens of states, it is medical marijuana is legal. Um, what, what happens next? Because there is going to be a showdown, isn't there, between the federal government or federal laws and state the level The one laws. thing that the federal government needs to do uh, is to deschedule marijuana as a class one narcotic alongside of heroin. Give me a break. So there is all this conjecture, there is all this hypothesis of what do, what are the benefits of marijuana? Well, Nick, there's no research happening in the United States, it's happening in other countries, but the research needs to take place and will take place uh, if marijuana is descheduled as a class one narcotic, narcotic. So very simple step for the federal government, declassify marijuana. The President uh, of the United States 
could order the um, uh, could order the Surgeon General to do that. Uh, the uh, we're we're a week or so after a, uh, a particularly um, uh, disturbing mass shooting. I guess to say one is less you know more disturbing than the other. Were, is wrong. Um, 17, 17 people were killed at a school in Florida. Um, did you have to deal with that kind of uh, sure. event? All, all, in, all. And how, how do you deal with that as a governor uh, or as, as a chief executive? And uh, is, there, is there a good solution to this type of violence? Um, what I said numerous times during the presidential campaign uh, and as governor, um, look, we, ca we need to be open to a discussion on how you keep guns out of the hands of mentally ill individuals. To, to say anything other than that would be stupid. So an open mind on how do we deal with this? But Nick, I have not heard any suggestions that would actually uh, bring about real, ch real change. President Trump saying that uh, we should arm teachers. As governor of New Mexico, after Columbine, I was asked, what do you do to prevent a further Columbine? And my answer was, look, you're not going to want to hear the answer, but you would lessen the impact of any, any shooter, active shooter, by requiring the teachers be armed. And I'm not advocating that, but yesterday now, or this morning, I read that 75% of teachers don't want to be armed. That means that 25% would actually arm themselves if allowed to do that. Wouldn't that, and again, I'm not saying this is the solution, but here's a, here is a concrete way of deterring these things from happening, sh these active shootings from happening in the future. If 25% of teachers are carrying, to me, that would be a deterrent to a lot of I think it would be a deterrent. Maybe it doesn't turn out that way, but I have to feel, forget about, forget about the actual uh, crossfire that would occur. Forget about an actual gunfight that's going to occur. Think about the fact that, well, gee, I'm not going to do the school thing anymore because, or I'm not going to, people that contemplate this kind of thing aren't going to think of schools anymore because I'm going to end up dead. And, and many of them don't care anyway. And I, so that's why it's not, a, it's not a solution to it, but it certainly would have to be a deterrent. Do you, you know, in a broader sense, um, do you feel like um, even since the 2006 campaign has the ability of America to kind of have these conversations? Is it, is it growing or is it shrinking? Is it staying the same? Is it always a struggle? I mean, because in a lot maybe, of ways, maybe know, it maybe it is growing. Maybe it is growing because uh, the, f looking at the outrage over Sessions and what he's saying regarding marijuana. Well, because of what he's doing uh, when it comes to marijuana, which is wanting to crack down on marijuana. In fact, it may it may turn out to be the opposite. May turn out right. to be that way. Well, uh, well, you know, let's let's end on this now. One of the things that I found genuinely interesting, apart from you know generally agreeing with your policy positions, it was your demeanor as a as a politician to say like honesty. Let's talk about this stuff. Um, you you're also a baby boomer, right? What year were you born? Yeah, Fifty three. Okay, so you're a bit you're about ten years younger, I guess, or six or seven years younger than uh, uh, than Trump or Hillary, all of that kind of uh, you know Bernie Sanders. These were early baby boomers, and they were all incredibly negative and cynical about America. I mean, uh, Trump talked about American carnage in his inauguration speech. Hillary Clinton was talking about how everything was kind of going to hell in a handbasket. Bernie Sanders was, you know, like, I mean, he lived in a world that was, you know, like out of a, a Little Rascals short or, so, you know, like Hoovervilles <laughs> in black and white, right? You were optimistic. What you know, what undergird, what undergirded your optimism and what, you know, what keeps it going in the face of situations where, you know, people are saying, oh, my God, they're killing kids. You know, the economy's in the crap or, uh, you know, China's taking over. One of the, one of the offshoots of, of Trump and, and all really hasn't happened. But the talk of cutting back and, and entitlements need to be reformed, which Trump isn't touching. But because of his rhetoric, I, I think now, for example, we're seeing companies step up and, uh, and uh, act actually doing more. Uh, there's more of a, 
seem, seems to me today that there's more of a corporate responsibility that's rising to the top. Well, that's, that's the private sector that's rising to the top. So I, I remain optimistic. And if government weren't there to provide all the services that it provides, um, we as Americans would be filling in that gap. We would be filling it in completely. I'm completely in that belief. And we would be buzzed on top of it. We would be happy. Uh, by buzz, yeah. So we would be buzzed. Okay, so it could be a natural high or it could be a, uh, or an artificial high, but we'd be in a better place uh, I, uh, when government yields and, freedom and I'm, I'm Uber everything, so I'm making a whole lot more money. I'm able to, to do things that I haven't been able to do before because I'm making more money. One of the things that Trump said is that by repatriating, which I believe when, if we would repatriate all that uh, corporate money that's uh, overseas, that uh, we would see that money invested in the United States. Well, it's, it's happened. So that's, the, that's another positive on the, on the Trump side. Well, we will leave it there. We've been talking with Governor Gary Johnson, a two-term governor of New Mexico, a two-time Libertarian Party presidential candidate. Governor, thanks so much for talking. Nick, thanks. For Reason, I'm Nick Gillespie.